to get up to this intersection, you want to look across the street on your right to a one-of-a-kind road sign in all of the United States. Begin one, mile zero. This road sign tells you you're at the beginning of Highway 1. And it starts right here. It will eventually end in Fort Kent, Maine, 2,209 miles to the north of us on the Canadian border. And up here on your right, we will have the Marrero Mansion. 410 Fleming, it's a lavender house with the purple shutters. Francisco Marrero bribed his way out of a Cuban jail, came to Key West. The land on your left is where he built a large cigar factory in 1889. Oh, a few short years later, he would meet then marry a girl from Key West, and the house back there built for them in the early 1890s. Marrero made a fortune selling his cigars around the world, but he would die unexpectedly. He just left all that money and the beautiful home back there to his Key West wife, or so she thought. That would be until his first wife from Havana, Cuba showed up. Oops, the one that no one knew about? Well, she did have the marriage certificate to prove she had married Marrero first. She would assume all the rights, the money, the home, and have the Key West wife kicked out onto these streets, homeless and penniless, not a thing that Key West wife could do about it. And we now cross over Duval Street. This is our main commercial thoroughfare through Old Town. Old Town is our historic preservation district. My friends, you are in the middle of one of the largest and oldest preservation districts in the United States. We have more than 3,000 structures here. Nearly 10%, almost 300 are on the National Register of Historic Places. How do you know if a home or business is on the register or not? Look for a little brass plaque. And you can find one across the street on your right. Aquamarine building, green stripe, blue shutters, second floor. That is the Cafe Marquesa, Marquesa Inn. You want to look to the left of the wooden doors on the first floor. Sitting horizontally, the little brass plaque. The building is indeed on the National Register of Historic Places. By the way, with nearly 10%, 300 out of 3,000 buildings having a brass black, yes, you are in the middle of one of the most historical cities in all of the USA. So look to the left of the wooden doors, there's that little brass black. Now we had our problems, especially back in the 1800s, Long, hot, humid summers, no air conditioning, not invented yet. How do you keep a house cool? You build in cooling features that would allow for more breeze or airflow to go through them. Good example on the corner to your left is this conch or Bahama style house. White with the blue shutters it has. A higher roof, wrap around porch, more and higher windows, breeze goes through it or wraps around the porch if you sat out there in the evening when it was a little bit cooler out. And on your right, a pink building, the Monroe County Library. It is part of the oldest public library system in Southern Florida. Isabel, get a book out to read. Take it where? A uh, palm garden here on your right. Quiet and peaceful. It features more than 25. Make that you cinco. 25 different varieties of palms from around the Caribbean and Southern Florida. And over 100 years ago, our spongers go out in their boats. They would take a glass pot, a bucket, and a very long pole. They placed the bucket into the water. They looked through the glass bottom. They used the bucket like a modern snorkeler uses their mask. It would clear up the view. And when they spot a sponge they want, they use the long pole that had metal hooks on the bottom. And they could pluck sponges off the seafloor and coral reef one at a time. They just brought them back to shore, stored them in an old sponge warehouse. The yellow building on your left could hold more than one million local sponges over a hundred years ago. And we would sell them to the rest of the United States until 1938. Back in 38, we would have a red tide. It was a blight that would destroy our sponge beds. By the time sponges would return to our waters, they had been replaced in the grocery stores and the supermarkets by man-made or synthetic ones. Now I do finish my tour in the middle of Mallory Square next to a building called the Sponge 
Park, and if you look up front, that's where I got SpongeBob from. SpongeBob, named after me, not the crazy cartoon square pants character. Y'all can call me SpongeBob. Pink building on your right, flag out front, is a zigzag house. Look at its roof. Up and down, up and down, it zigs and zags. Well, as a family would grow here back in the 1800s, they had zigzag additions on. They were cheap and economical to add. Some homes here today can 